four years old, and I think someone had just died, a friend had just died, or a family member um, who was distant to us, and I remember asking my dad, um, so where did they go? Did She went to heaven, right? And he said, well, Nicole, that depends on what she's trusting in to get there. And um, so that just kind of started us in on the whole conversation. I remember sitting on the couch and listening to him tell me about Jesus. And, um, and then he also gave his personal testimony about how his faith had transferred from his own works to um, the completed work of Christ, what he, how Jesus could offer um, eternal life to us. Um, and we have to simply trust in him for that to receive it. And so um, it was at a really young age. I was about four or five years old. And I remember at that moment just simply accepting it. My senior year um, at Baylor, I came in contact with some friends who were highly passionate um, about God's word and um, God's truth and proclaiming that and were um, really involved on campus um, at telling people about the Lord. Um, and the more conversations, I remember the first conversation um, that I really had that kind of clued me in. They said, well, if you, you know, if you really believe, then, you know, once God's spirit gets in you and once, um, you know, you're on fire, you can't help but persevere. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna, he's gonna be working in you. You know, those who he justified, he sanctifies. If you're sanctified, you'll be glorified. You know, that's gonna all work itself out. And those who don't, then they must have not truly believed, and so um, that actually sent me into a big investigation. Um, and I remember, I mean, I remember being in just my small room at Baylor, and um, and getting online and reading books and um, calling my family and um, asking such hard questions. And they had really strong, um, seemingly strong and supported remarks um, for all the questions I had. And it wasn't until I, I, I probably took a big look at John and saw um, just the consistency, uh, John 3, 16, John 5, 24, 6, 47, 10, 10. I mean, you just go down the line of all those grace verses. Um, and I remember um, someone told me during that time, which um, you know, you're just sort of trying to, just, Lord, just lead me to what's true. I mean, these people are so highly passionate about this. Could I be wrong about it? Um, you know, I remember someone saying, well, it's like in a courtroom. Um, if there's a complex case, the, the, you know, the judge wants to use clear-cut, um, past clear-cut cases to kind of dictate the complex. It's the same thing with scripture. You use very clear, clear-cut scripture to interpret the more complex passages. And that's when um, everything just sort of came to light and I started getting more answers. You know, I just think that free grace th theology is so liberating because it makes you thankful for, um, for what you've been forgiven from. And I think it's liberating to view scripture, um, so many scriptures instead of viewing them as heaven or hell, um, viewing them as far as um, quality of life here and in the life to come. Um, that's just really empowered me personally um, and not to be driven by what seems right or by um, reformed friends who are highly passionate about what they believe, but to be driven by the truth of God's word and to be, um, to be genuine and open to discussing that with other people.